I will now be reading a text by artist Sylvie Evans. They were unable to join us today, unfortunately, um, but I'm very pleased that Cecil entrusted this reading to me. Cecil B. Evans is an American-Belgian artist living and working in London. Evans' work examines the value of emotion and its rebellion, rebellion as it comes into contact with ideological, physical, and technological structures. They have recently exhibited a new performance commission for the MOVE Festival at Centre Pompidou in Paris and are working on an ongoing adaptation of the industrial era ballet Giselle. Recent selected solo exhibitions include um, Frac Lorraine, um, Chateau Chateau, Museo Madre, and many other incredible international shows. Cecil B. Evans, London. By lockdown time, galleries and institutions worldwide finally understood that the internet was a real thing, which was co-founding because it's been one for decades. Amid their scramble to devise new online platforms, they cheaply gather original content. Some artists, curators, and writers stopped looking at art and certainly stopped producing it, quote unquote, on demand. The online conversations that follow these refusals have been the closest to a proposal for the kind of future I want to be part of. They devolved into an energetically legible gibberish. Discussions that doubled back on themselves and swiftly shifted focus, long threads interrupted by the OP admitting they lost the plot, thoughts grown and multiplied rather than articulated. These ways of speaking about art and life after everything was suspended felt free, liberated from the need to provide tidy sound bites for an established phantom, quote unquote, we. Long-standing demands were rehashed in an apologetically personal and unending terms, and the overall opaqueness felt more conductive to progress than any formal scheme. I muted anyone who sounded too clever, blocked anyone who made too much sense, and reported anyone who suggested anyone's physical condition was up for debate. Mm -hmm. I'd cancel myself if it meant the world could be one iota more beautiful. For months, I've existed inside conversation with no destination or deadline, full of care and mutual aid, the ends trailing off into sleep or long stairs out of the window. These exchange words are engaged in, as Octavia Butler would call it, a positive obsession, quote unquote, with how we want to live together an obsession that must withstand whatever new normal will soon be asked to exist in. Mm. 